In this particular video presentation, what we're going to discuss is the market price of a product. Okay? How the price of a product is determined. And in economics, what we state is that the price of any product or a service is determined in the marketplace, in the free market. Now, what do we mean by this? Now, some people would say, well, the price of a product is determined by the supplier based upon his raw material, his expenses, and other factors. And you would be correct. But think about it this way. Apart from the expenses that a producer will incur for their product, they would also attach a premium, which would be the profit that they would want to make per unit produced. If they set the price of the product too high, from an extreme point of view, nobody would purchase. Rationally, the producer would say, well, if nobody's purchasing my product and my goal is to make a profit, then I should reduce my price. The fact that the producer is willing to reduce the price of his product means that the consumer has power over the producer. And therefore, it is not the producer's say alone. The consumer has some degree of input because when the consumer doesn't purchase, it shows that they are unwilling, right? Therefore, they are not demanding. It means they are unwilling to purchase that product at that given price for that particular period of time. If the price of the product were to decrease again, right? A lower price may entice some consumers to purchase. Not a lot, but some. But if we are dealing with a rational supplier, a rational producer, their goal would be when they produce something that they get everything sold. Nobody likes inventories. Nobody wants to have goods on their hands. So from an economic perspective, we say that the price of a product will be that unique price that results in every unit produced by a producer gets sold. So if you have produced 10 units and you have those 10 units available to be sold as a producer, whatever price allows for that 10 units to be purchased or demanded by consumers, that unique price we call your market price, and that is the price we see will be your equilibrium price for your product. So we have introduced a term called equilibrium price, and therefore we are discussing market equilibrium. So market equilibrium is a situation where the number of units demanded equal the number of units sold with regards to a particular product. And it is at this equilibrium position that the price of the good is determined. So it's not solely based upon the supplier and it's not solely based upon the consumer. But it's a haggling process that reach, reaches a balance when the consumers respond to a unique price which results in all units of the producer being sold. Okay? And this is how prices of products are determined in the free market. So we have here a demand schedule and we have a construction of the supply curve and the demand curve in question. Now it may look a little bit complicated but I'm going to try to break it down as simple as I possibly can. So to plot your demand curve we have here quantity demanded, quantity supplied and we have quantity demanded when income increases. So we realize we're going to have two demand curves and one supply curve. So let's, look, let's construct our first demand curve. It's going to be 50 cents, 20 units, $1, 16 units, and so forth. So look at it here. 50 cents and 20 units. And let's go to the last price of 250 and 4. 250 and 4. So it's going to be this coordinate point and this coordinate point. You join them together and you have the first demand curve. Let's construct the supply curve. At 50 cents, 4 units, 50 cents, 4 units, so that's here. And then you have 250 and 20 units. 250, 20 units. So you draw it. Supply curve connects. Okay? So we have our first supply curve and our first demand curve. 
where do it, they coincide? Where do they intersect? At 150. So at 150, we realize that 12 units are demanded. And the 12 units are demanded equal to the 12 units that the suppliers are willing to supply at that price. Let me say it again. The supplier is willing to supply 12 units of lollies at a price of 150. And at the price of 150, the consumers are willing to demand 12 units. So it is at the price at 150, the 12 units produced by the supplier will be purchased, all purchased by the consumer. Now, when the price was 50 cents, the consumer was willing to demand 20 units, but the supplier was only willing to, put, to, to supply four, okay? Or let me reverse my explanation to make it a little bit easier. The supplier would set a price of 250, and at 250, he's willing to supply 20 units. But look at something, at a price of 250, only four units are demanded. So the supplier says, you know what? That price is too high. I will reduce my price from 250 to $2. But at $2 at a lower price, the incentive has fallen for the supplier. So therefore, he will not produce 20 units anymore. In our table, we recognize he produces 16 units. So at $2, 16 units are produced and supplied, but 8 are demanded. Again, the, the producer rationally doesn't want any units left over. So he realizes that $2 is not sufficient to get the, 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 the consumers to purchase all. Now, at 150, something phenomenal happens. At 150, again, the price is lower, and therefore the reward or the returns to the supplier is also lower. Therefore, he says, at 150, I will not be willing to supply 16 units, but I will be willing to supply 12 units. And at 150, the 12 units that are supplied are actually purchased. So we realize that 150 is the unique price that results in the demand equaling the supply and therefore we call that 150 the equilibrium price okay so i hope you understand that there now we assume that income increase now remember before if we recall when there is an increase in income which is a factor that affects demand it will result in an increase in demand overall representative by a shift to the right in your demand curve okay we see that there now, what will be the price, the equilibrium price? What will be the new price of ice lollies with this new demand curve? Because consumers have an increase in income. Alternatively, I believe we can, we can intuitively believe or discern that if a consumer experiences an increase in income, they may be willing to pay a higher price for the product. But also with a higher price, we realize that the the firms, the suppliers, will be willing to supply more. Let's observe this. So, demand increases. At 50 cents, instead of 20, it's now 28. At $1, instead of 16, it's 24. And if we jump to 250, instead of 4, 12. So we realize that it, at, at, with an increase in income, at each price level, there is an increase in demand overall. Now, let's go back to the process again. When the price is 250, the suppliers are willing to supply 20 units. But demand is 12. Now demand has risen. It was once 4 at 250, now it's at 12. But rationally, the suppliers again, they want all supply. They don't want some, they don't want any leftover. They do they, they do not want anything to be added to the inventories. They want all sold. That's how they're gonna maximize their profits. Okay? So at 250, they realize that there is some leftover. 20, they're willing to supply 20, but only 12 is demanded. That will leave over with 8. At $2, however, we see that magical phenomena, phenomenon occurring again. At $2, the suppliers will not be willing to, su to supply 20 units, but 16, because again, the reward has fallen from 250 to $2. So they would say, I will not supply 20 units, but I would invest my time and resources to produce 16 units. And at $2, 16 units, those 16 units that are produced and supplied will be purchased. 
because we see that demand right at the new income level will be 16 at two dollars so we realize with this new demand curve d superscript one the equilibrium price which we would see from a diagrammatic point of view well at the point of intersection will be revealed at two dollars and it matches up here with our demand schedule so everything matches up here our diagram matches with the information in our demand schedule so on our old demand curve the equilibrium price will be at 150 and 12 units that are supplied will be demanded and with an increasing income the demand curve shifts to the right and therefore the new equilibrium price will be based upon the old supply curve but there's only one supply curve so the one supply curve and the new demand curve d superscript one which will be at the point of intersection which gives us two dollars and 16 units so 16 units will be supplied 16 units will be demanded at a price of two dollars and therefore before income changed at the first income level of the of the consumer the price of the good will be two dollars sorry will be 150 and at the new income level the price of the good would be two dollars okay so I hope that the market equilibrium process was clear to you and again I encourage you to stay more to future to stay tuned sorry <laughs> to future videos that I seek to present. Thank you.